In this video, I will attempt to build my first 555-4017 circuit. The build will be done on a small Vero board, and I will experiment until I have appropriate values for the components. The basic block diagram is simply a 555 timer A stable, which clocks a 4017 Johnson counter, which then drive 10 LEDs. Here is my rather neat little breadboard, and the feature components a 555, a 4017, a preset variable resistor of 100 kilo ohms, and a nice choice of LEDs. Starting with the 555 timer and placing it towards one end of the breadboard, I'm first wiring up the power supply positive and zero volt lines. On the 555, pin 8 is positive and pin 1 is zero volts or the negative rail. On the breadboard, the negative rail is the long line of holes that goes right across the board and is indicated by the black line, whereas the red positive rails have a break in the middle, indicated by the two red lines. Pin 4 on the 555 is also connected to positive, as it is not used. I chose this preset skeleton resistor because it has a high 100 kilo ohm value which is going to be handy for producing a slow square wave output. I will wire this in shortly. But the first resistor to go in goes from positive to pin 7. I have chosen a 470 kilo ohm resistor. Now I am wiring in the preset resistor. I need two wires to do this, which is a little awkward, but doable. Note that the third leg of the preset resistor is not used. The next wire in connects pin 6 to pin 2. The next component is a capacitor and I'm going to try a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. This goes in with pin 2 being the positive end of the capacitor and the negative end of the capacitor going to the negative of the power supply. We're almost done and I'm just going to put a green LED and one kilo ohm resistor across the output of the 555, which is pin three. Okay, time for the first test. Power on, and it doesn't work. Okay, something is clearly wrong. The LED is not coming on, nor is it blinking, nor is it dimly on. I might have a dead 555 chip. So here I'm taking this one out and I'll pop another one in its place. That didn't solve it either. Hmm. We're not off to a very good start, are we? Well, I have a green LED and it's not coming on. So here I connect its anode to pin four, which is positive. So it should come on straight away as it should pass current through it and through the one kilo ohm resistor connected to the negative. However, it doesn't. I figure it must be a faulty LED. So I swap it out with a red LED and this LED finally lights. I then connect it into place to pin three and it lights, but it is continuously on. It is supposed to be blinking. As I turn the preset resistor, I get a brief blink from the LED, so something is happening. I'm getting closer. Now I can see it blinking very slowly and the off time is very short. My resistor and capacitor values need changing. Starting with the 470 kilo ohm resistor, it must be too high. So I swap it out for a much lower value resistor. 560 ohms. It's blinking much faster now, but I want it a little slower. So I'm changing the capacitor to 100 microfarads. That's much better, but maybe perhaps a little too slow. But at least I now have a working 555 A stable circuit. Finally, I put back the little green LED and find that it works after all. It might have just been a poor connection the first time round. 
I'm still not quite happy with the values, so here I'm swapping out the first resistor for a 15 kilo ohm value, and the capacitor I'm changing for 22 microfarads. These give me a much nicer blink, both in frequency range and in on to off time. With the 555 A stable circuit complete, I can now move on to building the 4017 circuit. Starting with pin 8 to negative and pin 16 to positive. Pin 3 of the 555 timer, which is the output, goes to pin 14 of the 4017. Pin 14 is the clock input on the 4017. Pins 15 and 13 on the 4017 are inactive in this circuit and so are wired to negative. Now we are ready to start placing the 10 LEDs that are going to make the light chaser, and I'm placing them across the bottom part of the breadboard with all the cathodes connected to the black bus bar as a useful common connection. Now I connect the anodes of the LEDs to the 4017 from left to right as follows. Pins three, two, four, 7, 10, 1, 5, 6, 9, and 11. Lastly, I need a 1 kilo ohm resistor to go from the 10 common cathodes of the LEDs to the negative of the circuit. I figured out where I wanted it to go, but I needed to move one of the black wires to an adjacent hole on the same node first. The circuit is now completely wired up. We are ready to test. Connect power leads and switch on. Works first time. That's a relief. So that's it. The circuit is working. All that remains now is to document it. Let's draw the full circuit diagram. The 555 has pins 8 and 4 to positive and pin 1 to negative. A 15 kilo ohm resistor connects from positive to pin 7. From pin 7 to pin 6, we have a 100 kilo ohm preset resistor. Pins 6 and 2 are connected together. From pins 6 and 2, 
we place the positive end of a 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor whose negative end goes to the negative of the circuit. The output comes out on pin 3 from the 555, which then connects to pin 14 of the 4017. Three pins from the 4017 connect to negative, pins 8, 13 and 15. The 10 LED outputs come from, in order, pins 3, 2, 4, 7, 10, 1, 5, 6, 9 and 11. These connect to the anodes of the 10 LEDs. The LEDs cathodes are all connected together and connect to a 1 kilo ohm resistor which then connects to negative. Lastly, I forgot to mention the little green monitoring LED that gave me so much trouble. This comes out from pin 3 of the 555 with its cathode connected to a 1 kilo ohm resistor down to negative. Lastly, I've got to add the positive supply to pin 16 of the 4017 and include the power supply voltage.